Well, joining us to talk markets this weekend, Jim Ember as well as Naomi Bloom. Let's dive into things, Jim. Corn prices were finally starting to see momentum this week. We had three consecutive days of corn trading higher. And then late Wednesday, we had President Trump post on his Truth Social that Coca-Cola has agreed to switch from using high fructose corn syrup in their products to cane sugar. How did the markets react to that news? Well, I think so far, pretty good. I mean, when the news came out, we saw a market that was kind of both unchanged and we're kind of in that pattern yet as of this recording. So we've seen corn drop to nearly three cents. We've seen it come back now to steady here at a moment. We're looking at it right now. But again, the key feature here is what is the impact? We're really looking at about 400 million to 500 million bushels. If you break that down specific to Coke, you're probably in somewhere between a 70 million bushel range to 140 million bushel range, just depending what those usage numbers are. Uh, that's really the ballpark that we're in. So this is not uncommon of a USDA report where market misses it just by a little bit. We get a lesser or greater number. In this case, this is lesser usage. So this is something that we're going to have to pay attention to because, again, right now there's big yield forecasts. We've got circumstances now with this news, as long as it confirms and runs through by certification through Coca-Cola. And then you've got the parameter where the yields are getting a little bit bigger on reported out of Brazil. And that's something we're going to have to watch here as well, because a lot of privates taking their estimates up two to three million metric tons. And when you look at nearly 80 million bushels there, kind of, it's just a lot of production news that keeps some pressure around this market as we work ahead, especially as we come in technically around 428, 434, and 442. Those are some big numbers here for the corn market off the December. Naomi, it's not like last week's WASD report was bearish. But the markets didn't react that way. I mean, we have world corn ending stocks now at their lowest point since 2013. So why does the corn market only seem to be paying attention to some of these bearish headlines at this point? Well, it's a combination of seasonals. And to your point, um, the headlines overall are a little bit more negative. Traders right now are assuming that the yield is probably going to be larger than the current USDA number of 181. Now, there were some headlines this week that suggested that portions of the Midwest are struggling with pollination. And that, I think, is part of the reason why corn futures prices put the brakes on the sell-off. But it's not in enough news right now to be bullish. So what we're watching for and waiting for continues to be yield. If the yield comes in near 185 or 186, like some in the industry are suggesting, well, then you've got corn carry out that drops to, or I'm sorry, that increases to over 2 billion bushels. But if we end up with yields closer to 181 in line with USDA projections, well, that's actually a supportive story because the demand overall has been so strong and that would keep new crop carry out closer to 1.6 billion bushels. So it's a waiting game trying to understand where the U.S. yield really is at. Yeah, and, and Naomi mentioned it, Jim, but there is talk about pollination problems that are starting to pop up across the Corn Belt. Farm Journal agronomist Ken Ferry actually confirming what he calls overly tight tassel wrap, first time I've heard that, that that's impacting pollination. But Jim, do you think this really has the potential to take a big bite out of the corn production number this year? Well, I think that was a great article. And if you read through the details, a lot of the focus was on rapid growth April 14th through the 17th. Anything planted after the 17th, they're not seeing the impact. But we're talking big boomer yield type potential on these varieties uh, that were planted in that window. So if we start looking and saying, hey, across Illinois, 7 to 8% of the corn was planted in that window, that at least gives the bulls something to hang their hat on that, hey, let's slow down a little bit on some of these yield forecasts. We maybe have some ridge building coming. Again, demand has been strong you know the investment funds are a big piece of that but when you put that all together at least on the demand side we expect that demand to remain strong in the face of uh, the circumstances so again from our vantage point is of the story yes does it at least help temper some of the 185 186 187 uh yield we think it does because again we're more in that tune right now of a 179 to 184 let's focus into that and let's see what usda gives us so at least the bull has its hat to hang on one thing to slow down on these big yields because it feels like we're in a race to print the biggest one right now by a lot of people. Yeah, and we really haven't had a lot of weather problems until this point to talk about. But, Naomi, we do have some heat entering the picture next week, too. Is that something that the market should already be trading and maybe we won't see that be a bullish factor? Or is that something that we could see really fuel the market next week? 
It could be something that fuels the market next week. And so we'll see what happens on Sunday night trade as we uh, look at the forecast for that coming week. If the heat is there, uh, the market will respond to it. I don't know in the form of a significant rally, but again, it keeps the market from falling apart until we have a better idea of what the yield will be. So corn market, maybe another couple of weeks here of sideways trade, but overall the trend is still lower. The seasonals do suggest prices continue to grind lower until that late August time frame. So right now, focus on any short-term rally for an opportunity for a bump of cash sales. Uh, there is supposed to be about 2 billion bushels still out in the countryside that needs to get priced according to that quarterly stocks report for old crop corn. So that's going to be our focus right now until we, again, get a better understanding of where the yield is or isn't out in those fields right now. Well, could China be gearing up to buy some soybeans? We're gonna to talk to our analysts about that next.